also prey on the young, the old, and the weak, even disemboweling them alive. And they do it all with that big, ugly smile and a blood-curdling cackle. So it's not hard to see why hyenas are such an easy animal for people to hate. Except that many other predators commit the same easy kills, including the noble and brave lion. As it turns out, the difference between hyenas and many other predators is only skin deep. Despite their skulking scavenger reputation, hyenas actually hunt and kill 95% of their prey. Don't let their looks fool you. Hyenas are intelligent and even brave. And they heroically protect their kills from marauding larger predators. They care for each other and can hear a pack member's distress calls from 10 kilometers away. These adaptations have made them a Serengeti success story. Hyenas are much more numerous than lions are. We've got maybe 2,000 lions in Serengeti. There's about 7,000 hyenas. Hyenas wear down their prey through sheer numbers and endurance. They count on the energy of the pack, not an individual, even taking turns leading the chase. By hunting in packs, it allows them to pull down bigger prey than they would be able to do if they were on their own. Once they've run their prey to exhaustion on the open plains, the pack moves in for the kill. For hyenas, hunting is a team sport, anything to get the job done. But the rules around feeding aren't open to interpretation. This is a matriarchal society. Females rank highest, so they eat first, then the pups, and then the males. Any hungry jokers who get caught jumping the queue will get a walloping to remember from the boss lady. They also must endure the pestering of obnoxious and higher-ranking juveniles, or risk violent reprimand. Savage brutality isn't the only method of discipline. That shrill cackle can also be used to resolve disputes. Studies have revealed that the pitch of a laugh reveals age, and the frequency indicates social rank. We only get these packs out on the open, treeless plains of the Serengeti. Once you get into the woodlands of the Serengeti, which is two-thirds of Serengeti, then the hyenas are solitary, and they feed only on small prey. Because they can adapt to whatever the Serengeti has to offer, they will almost never go hungry. A recent study conducted at Duke University pitted chimpanzees against spotted hyenas in a battle of wits. To be clear, spotted hyenas are not smarter than chimpanzees. But amazingly, they are fully capable of outperforming chimps in cooperative problem-solving tests. Two chimpanzees required extensive training and cooperation to complete the same challenge the two spotted hyenas were able to crack in just a few minutes. In the wild, this problem-solving teamwork can be the difference between life and death. Traditionally, people think of hyenas as being scavengers. In fact, they're only scavengers under certain circumstances, often when they're on their own, when they're hunting singly. And uh, they're obviously extremely successful because they're very numerous in our system. Even scavenging sometimes takes ingenuity. If hyenas see vultures circling in the distance, they know where to go for an easy meal. Spotted hyenas weigh 80 kilograms. That's half the weight of a lion. But incredibly, they have the same bite force, 900 kilograms per square centimeter. So if they find bones already picked clean, they can still crush and eat them to extract the nutritious marrow inside. A big cat wouldn't bother, and that alone is a reason why these incredible survivors deserve more respect. They might not be pretty, but hyenas always get the last laugh.
for any animal to survive in the wilds of Africa. Keeping up with the competition is critical. Some use strategy. Some use strength. Cheetahs use speed. Their perfectly adapted bodies can catch dinner in less than 30 seconds. Leave the brute strength to the lions and hyenas. At less than 80 centimeters tall and barely 50 kilograms, the cheetah is built for speed. It can reach uh, speeds of up to 100 kilometers an hour. That is about twice uh, that of a greyhound uh, dog. It's more than twice of the fastest human on Earth. It takes more than small size to reach that velocity. Compared to other land mammals of the same weight, uh, a very large proportion of their body is made out of skeletal muscles. These are the muscles that drive uh, the limbs and movement. They have very long muscle fibers and very strong muscle fibers that contract at very high rate. The cheetah's spine works like an extension of its hind legs. As the legs move forward, the spine bends and recoils, driving those legs backwards. This then creates a lot of force at a very high velocity accelerating the animal forward. In order to fuel the high-speed chase, cheetahs have adapted an efficient way to breathe. In order to then move that fast, you require lots of oxygen. So they have then uh, physiological adaptations in addition to the muscular and skeletal adaptations. Is that they have very large nasal passages to allow lots of air to go through their lungs. They have relatively large lungs and they have very large heart that contracts very high rate. Cheetahs are built for speed, but a predator cannot survive on speed alone. They have adapted different strategies that allow them to hunt solo or in groups. Female cheetahs with no cubs or cubs too young to hunt are perfectly happy to fly solo. When the cubs are old enough to hunt, they join forces with mom to hunt in a group a rare but valuable strategy in the big cat world. Adult male cheetahs also hunt in groups. But whether solo or in a group, their slight stature limits the size of their prey. But that doesn't make the hunt any easier. And that allows them to attack not only larger prey, but allows them to get a much more consistent prey because they can help each other. Now, the adaptations of hunting in groups really is to do with the female. They uh, cooperate with each other when they're stalking so that they can create the greatest amount of confusion when they eventually charge, and the prey that don't know which way to run. Lionesses can run close to 80 kilometers per hour. From a shot at an ambush, hiding in long grass near a water source, waiting for thirsty prey to wander within striking distance. Once the lioness downs her prey, a quick chokehold crushes its throat, cutting off the airway. The pride then butchers the flesh with molars like meat shears. That level of teamwork reaches far beyond the hunt. Prides are made up of relatives. All of the females are related to each other, and therefore all the babies are related to each other. And they tend to all give birth at the same time. And that means that because they're relatives, the one female is perfectly happy to suckle any of the babies in the group. They may not be her own babies, but they're for sure going to be her grandchildren or nephews and nieces. So she can act as, as the nursemaid and a, a wet nurse at that, while the other ones are catching the food and supplying the group. 
The males rarely hunt, but they contribute in a different way. They defend their territory and resources from competing hyena clans and other lion prides. The males patrol territories of up to 100 square miles, defending their turf from rivals. The stakes are high. An invading pride will kill all the local cubs and dominate the lionesses to swell its own ranks. Repelling an invading pride demands brute strength and strategy. New research suggests that lions can actually determine the size of a competing pride by counting its roars. With that information, they can decide to attack or hold back. It's like a finely tuned military operation, and the survival of their pride hangs in the balance. This devotion to the pride, essential to survival and unique among big cats, is why lions are rightly called king. Lions get all the glory, and hyenas get none. Demonized as ugly, noisy scavengers that steal other animals' kills, hyenas have an image problem. Fact is, they're misunderstood. Yes, they scavenge, but they're also brilliant pack hunters, downing large prey like wildebeests and zebra.